I completed the, the uh, TURP, T-U-R-P, which stands for transurethral resection of the prostate. I'll try to remember to put the full title down below for you when I edit this video in case you might want to see it. Okay, um, it did not go well. Actually, the TURP went fine. It was the issue with the stones in my bladder that was the real problem. Back drinking coffee again. <laughs> Just to cover a little background, I went in for a CT scan a few weeks ago that revealed some stones in my bladder. And the surgeon had to remove those first before performing the prostate surgery. He spent two hours working on those stones, breaking them up with a laser and sucking the debris out. He decided to delay the turp until later. Some of the stones were large, about two centimeters, he said, which is almost an inch. And they were hard, he said, and difficult to break up. Well, thankfully, I was out under general anesthesia. I, I told the anesthesiologist, I want total sensory deprivation. I don't want to even know what's going on. And I was out, and it was good. But that night in the hospital was difficult. At one point in the evening, the catheter that was dr draining me stopped draining. It got clogged up. Two nurses worked on it with a syringe to irrigate it and open it again. That didn't work. So they called the doctor. He drove in from his home and taught them a useful, useful little trick. He said, deflate the balloon in the upper end of the catheter and that allowed him to strain, to stream water into my bladder and then suck it out. And what came out was ugly. I need to warn you, this next part is kind of disgusting. Stop now if this sort of thing makes you squeamish. What came out was ugly black blood clot. Lots of it. The bladder was full of it. He must have pulled out... 15 to 20 syringes of that stuff. And I'm not talking about tiny little syringes that they use when they give you a shot. No, these things here, these things, these hold about 60 cc's of liquid each. That's about two fluid ounces, a quarter of a cup. And he just kept sucking stuff out. And then he had, he dumped it and then he put some water into it, right? And then went back into the end of the catheter and put water in my bladder and then gently sucked it back out again did a bunch of these a bunch of these until well eventually the fluid he pulled out started to clear and he continued working until he was satisfied the the liquid was clear enough for me to be okay that got everything draining properly again i gotta say he's a good doctor i really like him anyways i have some of these because the catheters that I was using were, were getting blocked. I could get only two to three weeks out of a catheter before it had to be replaced. And that was painful. So what the doctor did was he taught me how to irrigate my catheter to keep it open. He gave me several of these, some sterile cups and a bottle of sterile water. And the irrigation worked. I kept my last catheter working until I was scheduled for my surgery. And I didn't wait for it to get near to blocking once a week. I went in there and I just worked. The, he said, work the fluid in, pull it out. He said, just go back and forth a few times and then that will keep the catheter open. Well, it did. It worked really, really well. Okay, the first night in the hospital. This was after the stones were removed. I feel compelled to warn some of you about Ambien. It's a sleep medication. Now, I knew I was going to be awake most of the night, and I didn't mind that. A nurse offered to give me Ambien, half a tablet, 2.5 milligrams. I was unfamiliar with Ambien. After I swallowed it, she warned me that some people have vivid dreams on this stuff. <laughs> I had no idea some people take it as a recreational drug and i can see why for me it was awful i dreamed constantly even when i was awake i would i would see visions when i closed my eyes and i did not sleep well but the worst part was the hallucinations the following morning at one point i'm sitting in my bed 
and I saw what looked like a pile of dark lint about the size of a football on the floor behind my hospital door, which is a jar. It was open a little bit. As, as I looked at it, it started to move. Then I saw it was a pile of large black spiders, and they were weaving a web toward my bed. I called out to the hospital staff to be careful when they ended. Don't come in here. Don't open the door. Well, when they came in, they moved the door, and the pile immediately disappeared. <laughs> it was gone. I told them about the spiders and that it was a hallucination. And the woman nurse said, oh, no, that was just a shadow. Well, it may have been triggered by a shadow, but I was aware enough at that point to know what it was. It was a hallucination. But when I first saw the spiders, I was convinced they were real. The male nurse, he took hold of my arm as if he suspected I might go off on some sort of crazy episode. But I was okay at that point. I lied back down on my bed and collected my thoughts. I was starting to feel better. Okay, the day after that first set, uh, surgery, I was released to go home around 4 o'clock in the afternoon. A friend drove me home. He drove me to the hospital and home. So this was the first recovery. This was the first the following day. Well, that day was not pleasant. I sat down at my desk to work on my website, my blog, and I started feeling dizzy. So I, I know what to do. I moved myself down onto the floor lest I fall. And I stayed there for maybe half an hour. When I felt like I, I could move, I unlocked the front door so that the paramedics could easily get in if I needed to dial 911. And I thought about it. I also found my phone and I kept it next to me all day. And I opened my bottle of Pedialyte and occasionally drank some of it. I think I might have been dehydrated because in the evening before, about 8.30, I took half a Somonex and went to bed because it had been a rough day. And I slept 12 hours. There was no in fluid, no fluid intake during all that time, but my catheter was continuing to drain me. So I think fluid out, but not fluid in. The Pedialyte was really helpful. It worked great. By the afternoon, I was feeling fine again. I was back to normal. You might want to keep a bottle on hand. I, I, I highly recommend it. You never know when you might need it. I was glad I had that bottle. Okay. There was some discomfort that day and evening. The doctor said I might experience some muscle spasms in my bladder. I did, and they were painful, but they only lasted a few seconds. If I sat still, the spasms really happened. Movement seemed to trigger them, but I was supposed to get up and walk around. I was supposed to move as much as I could. So I got my rolling walker out from the back of the closet and kept that close to me so that I could move around with uh, the support of it. I think it's a nitro rollator. They're expensive, about $400 on Amazon, but you get what you pay for. It's a good one. I didn't pay that much, by the way. I took advantage of an open box sale, so I got mine for less, but I really like it. Okay, three days later, I was told to report to the city hospital this time. Uh, on Thursday, it was, for the second procedure, the TERP. For, the, for the, the bladder surgery, I was in the, the local hospital, the Valley Hospital. I got to say, I was reluctant. I felt I wanted more time to prepare myself psychologically after that previous experience from that procedure. But I went anyway because I really wanted to get it over with as soon as possible. And again, a friend did the driving for me. This was even more convenient because he checked with his insurance. He was covered to drive my car, so... He just drove me down in my car, kept the car at his house, then came and got me the next day when I was released. Well, the surgery for the TERP, that went very well. I was in a, a lot of discomfort afterward, but this was during recovery. That was only because of how they had secured the catheter to my pelvis. It was really cinched in to my skin, awful tight, and it caused intense burning. They gave me every dose of painkiller they could legally give me, but it did nothing. How, how much is it now? It's still eight to nine. It's still eight to nine. It's still eight to nine on a scale of one to ten. Well, finally, they released the binding on the catheter and the pain immediately went away. It was fine. I was fine after that. So and I spent that night in the hospital 
and I felt really good. The Terp procedure was really easy. There is a little oozing still, shall we say, around the surgery site. I was ready for that. I didn't want any of that gucka getting into my underwear, so I bought a box of adult diapers at Costco. Really easy. And when I want to take a shower, just cut the sides with scissors and let the diaper fall off, then step into the shower to get clean. It's just, the, the, those diapers to me are so, so convenient. However, the hospital wouldn't let me sleep enough. Every couple of hours, they had to come into my room to administer medication. Someone needed to take my blood pressure, whatever. Some of it was given through the, uh, the intravenous tubing that was in my arm. Some of it, they had to insert a needle. And they also didn't monitor the irrigation fluid. I had to keep an eye on it, even though I wasn't told to. And I would press the button to call the nurse when the source bag was empty or the drainage bag was full. And I got really tired. I got to tell you, I got really tired of needles being poked into my veins. Now, I'm not a sissy when it comes to needles. I don't care. But after a while, you get a little too sensitive to the pain. I mean, every poke is worse than the last one, it seems like. Well, thankfully, I was, uh, I was released around noon the next day, and I felt so good to be back in my own home. I showered and went to bed and slept for maybe an hour. I didn't want to sleep long. And that night I enjoyed a good night of undisturbed sleep. It was really nice. So now we're in recovery too. Recovery after the turp has been simple. There is still some drainage, but I simply cut the diaper off, step into the shower to clean myself, and then put a, a clean diaper on. You know, that part, that part is easy. I don't mind that. On Monday, What's today? Today's Tuesday, I think, on Monday. That was yesterday. I returned to the doctor's office to have the catheter removed. That hurt, but thankfully less than I expected it to, and the pain only lasted a few seconds. And I now feel so good that I just feel free of that thing after putting up with it for about nine weeks while I waited for my surgery. I'm still not used to the fact of it not being there because like when I get out of bed, the first thing I do is I reach down to grab the hose to lift up the bag so I can go drain it. Well, it's not there anymore. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad to see that thing gone. Okay, but I got to tell you, I'm not out of the woods yet. I still can't void my bladder. In other words, I can't pee. I feel the need to go, but nothing comes out. The doctor sent me home with an appointment in the afternoon to come back and report any progress. None. As I re went back to the doctor's office, I was resolved to get yet another catheter. But then I remembered someone I know who did self -cather catheterization. Kind of tough to say. He cathetered himself as often as he needed to. So I asked the doctor about it, and he said, yeah. We can teach you to do, th to do that, to self-cath. He knows I'm good with my hands. He knows I'm a DIYer. He knows I bought my cooking videos. He knows I tailor my own shirts. This is one of my, my self-tailored shirts. I made this shirt, right? So he knew I could do it. And the nurse, bless her, she was such a sweetheart. She taught me how. And then they sent me home with a bag full of supplies, enough uh, catheters to last me at least a week, easy, maybe longer. Meanwhile, I'm supposed to get a phone call from the supplier who will set me up with regular home delivery of more supplies, all paid for by my health insurance. And I got to say, self-catheterization is easy. He said some people just, they can't do it. They say, oh, no, I can't do that. It's easy. I just put on some unused uh, rubber gloves, those nitrile gloves or whatever they're called, and then um, I open the catheter envelope and, and prep the cath, right? clean around the area where it has to be inserted. And it's easy to insert but really slowly. I eventually, I feel the tip enter my bladder and I begin to drain. And that takes less than a minute. And then slowly remove it and throw all that stuff in the trash. <laughs> Good. And he said to do it four to six times per day. And uh, okay, that's easy too. If I feel the urgency to use the bathroom. And when I do, like I did when I felt that when this morning when I got up in the morning. And if I feel... I can do this myself, it makes me feel better about it because this is something I can do. I like taking care of myself. I like that. And you know, unlike when they were shoving the catheter in, it, they weren't concerned about how much it hurt. 
but when I'm putting that little tiny small catheter up inside of me, if I feel a little pain, stop, take a deep breath, and then continue on nice and slow. See, I can control the pain, and it's a lot, it's a lot easier. I did uh, hear from a friend's wife. She's a nurse, and she said sometimes it takes a, lot, takes a while longer for the swelling to go down, and that might be my issue. After all, it was only last week I had two, two surgeries, right? Um, and, and that's another thing about with the fixed catheter, I wouldn't know when the swelling had gone down enough for me to void my bladder naturally. With these catheter things, I'll know when I don't need them anymore. If I feel the urge to go and I'm able to go without the catheter, job done, right? So I go to see the doctor again this week. This is on Thursday. Hopefully I'll have something positive to report. I do actually, because at first I didn't even feel any need to go and there were 500 cc's in my bladder that had to be drained out. But they drained out with this, I drained it out with this little self catheter thing. Um, but now I feel a need to go. Like I woke up in the middle of the night about four o'clock in the morning and had this urgency to go use the bathroom. I used a catheter, drained my bladder, went back to bed, went back to sleep, right? So uh, meanwhile, I prefer, I prefer this method of self-care because again, it's me doing it and I feel like I'm taking care of myself. A few things worth mentioning um, in, sum in summary, overall, I would highly recommend a TERP if, if it is necessary to allow the bladder to drain normally. If any of you guys need to get it done, get it done. It was easy, and there were usually no complications. My procedure was somewhat complicated by the fact that there were stones in my bladder, and those had to be removed first, and the recovery from that was more difficult. If I had only needed the terp done, this whole process would have been a lot easier. So, and, and you know, let's face it, staying in a hospital is not fun, but if it's necessary to improve our quality of life, we do it. And I do got to say the hospital food is pretty good. Now, here I am, I'm doing this video only a few days later, right, after two surgeries in the hospital. And I'm comfortable, I'm sitting here, I'm fine. The path to full recovery will be a long way, I understand. I have to recover full control of my bladder again. That's where the adult diapers are useful in case I don't make it to the bathroom on time. He said that might happen, um, but I, I'm wearing diapers and that's easy. I bought them at Costco. They're not too bad. One thing may be worth mentioning. When a nurse was helping me dress at the hospital down in the city for the release after my second surgery, I saw something crawling on the floor. I pointed to it and I asked the nurse to look at it. What is that? She said it was a spider and she stepped on it. And I thought, okay. I was thankful it wasn't a hallucination. If she could see it, then it wasn't another hallucination. And I got to say, the doctor solved um, a problem with my dizziness because I was having some dizziness. And I gave him a list of my medications that I was taking because they always ta ask you, what meds are you taking? What meds are you taking? What meds are you taking? I heard that so many times I decided to just write them all up and carry the list with me. He asked me why I was taking metformin for diabetes when I don't have diabetes. I told him the nurse practitioner wanted me not to become diabetic. Well, the doctor said that might that, that med might be lowering my blood sugar too much and that might be causing the dizziness. So I stopped taking that med, right? My blood sugar isn't dangerously high. It doesn't have to be brought down. I'm not diabetic. I can be more careful with my diet. No smoothies, less chocolate milk, which I don't have very often anyways. I only have one spoon of sugar in my coffee. And no, I don't drink sodas. I don't drink sodas. I like them, but when I'm thirsty, I just get a glass of water, right? Well, I can understand her somewhat. She's not a doctor. She's a nurse practitioner. She can't diagnose anything. You know, she's not a doctor. The only thing she can do is prescribe meds. And she does that in spades. She loves pills. I'm down now. I'm down to taking only three each day. I had seven or eight up here in the cupboard that she and the other doctor had prescribed. So what I can say overall is I'm extremely thankful. I have good medical insurance. It's a United Healthcare plan um, negotiated with my former employer. 
the University of California. I'm retired uh, from there. I can see any doctor I want, specialists included, no referrals necessary. And for this entire problem, start to finish, I only paid a $100 copay when I first entered the hospital. And sometimes they ask me for a copay when I go into the doctor's office, but most of the time, they don't even ask for that. And that's it, right? Everything else was completely covered by my insurance. I even got my second COVID booster shot that was yesterday, and it was free to me. So here I am. The worst is over. I'm on the road to recovery. Some of my experiences were unpleasant, but those are behind me now. I'm so happy I got this turp sur surgery done. My life is expected to be so much better. The pain I felt every day before the turp is gone. To be honest, I'm not getting any younger. I'll be 71 years old at the end of next month, July, if you want to send me some prezzies. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Don't do that. But the thing is, you know, I don't know what I might encounter next. As I told one friend, is this turp thing? Is this the first domino? What's next after this one? But I feel good. I got a one big problem solved, and I'm thankful for modern surgery. So I do want to thank those of you who sent me email or commented on my YouTube channel. It felt really good that so many of you cared about me and what I was going through. It, it, it really helped me. It lifted up my spirits. It helped me to feel better. So again, thank you, your angels. Hopefully I didn't bore you too much with this video, and thanks for watching.